everyone, and welcome back to Rotten Tomatoes is Wrong. I am your host, Mark Ellis, joined once again by <laughs> my beloved co-host. She's back. I hope for good, but probably not. Jacqueline Coley, <laughs> how you doing, babe? I haven't seen you in, like, years. It's been a month. <laughs> <laughs> it's felt like a long time. I know, I, I was know. running out of excuses to tell people, because usually <laughs> if, if, like, one of us is out for a week, I'll be like, oh, it won't, it, we're on assignment. Or, you know, you just, like, make up some yeah. vague term, yeah. like, working really hard. I'll be honest, by the end of this run, I was like, look, I think she's home playing video games, but she deserves it, because... She she had a brutal award season. She went to every red carpet. She's flying all over the world. She deserves to sit home and play Fortnite if she wants to. I mean, in truth, there was some video games played. Uh, it was Don't Starve, though, for anyone listening. If you want to find me, I have a server. No, uh, I had, I'm had. i old, man. And so— Oh, you, that's it, what happened. Yeah, so I will be the first to say— um, Ladies and gentlemen, take care of your feet. If they tell if you're if you have a doctor that says, "Hey, I think you might have something wrong with your foot. Mm -hmm. Maybe don't wear heels as much as you do this award season. Try to get into some flats." And then you start thinking of all the looks that you can't serve, oh, and therefore boy. ignore that advice. Just know that you might be laid up for a month. Oh my God, is that what happened? It was I mean, foot? that was like the sequence of events. But as with so many things, as you get older, you think that this is what's wrong with the car, and then they tell you there's something else wrong with it. <laughs> well, but I'm fine. I'm I'm nothing wrong with it again just uh just getting old gotta stretch guys stretch take your vitamins it was a great segue you just had yeah because we're taking care of the car yeah we have a a movie that i'm not gonna quite say it's a classic but we do have a classic guest here to talk Ooh. about it and it's been way too long since i've seen you in person as well yeah. sir from the outlaw nation the hub is youtube you can uh check out his channel subscribe and look at all the cool shows he's got going on he is the one the only the outlaw himself mr john roca Hello. back on the show Thank you. this is the first time in person. I know. So I'm very excited by this. Yeah. I really do feel like, I do have to say, hearing yeah. Mark say your name, I do feel like you need a WWE style entrance. Like, I don't even feel like this is right <laughs> Oh, right he's now. had plenty of those. I know. Those I know he has, days. but that's what's like, <laughs> those were the that's days. what's weird about this. Like, I, I feel I, fe I feel weird. I Just, mean, <laughs> look, especially because yeah. the movie the we're talking about here. here. Yeah, the history it's a lot. here. It's a we lot. have history. history. Here. John knows a little something about movie trivia. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm thinking back on the Schmodown days, and I'm wondering, did you ever go go through the filmography of this particular franchise we're yeah. about to talk oh, about. absolutely. Action Adventure is where you're at. Thrillers, uh, yes, of course. Vin Diesel's filmography, but also the Fast and Furious movies because I like these movies for a number of reasons, and I always go see them, either opening night or at the screenings. Mm -hmm. I love this series. From the first one until the last one, except for the second one. But yes, absolutely. <laughs> and There's a lot of interesting directors on this, too. It, it yeah, is, and we're talking about the, the OG here today, The Fast yeah. and the Furious from 2001. Rob Cohen directed, starring, yeah. obviously, Vin Diesel, Paul Walker, the whole gang. And look, it, it's a movie that you go back and, and you revisit now, knowing everything that we know and seeing all the movies that we've seen in this franchise since then, and you say, now we're blowing up stuff and we're international spies and we're going to outer space. Back here, it was just <laughs> like a... a street racing movie. Yeah. There was a heist element to it, but we were just yeah. really kind of doing drag racing and living our lives a quarter mile at a time. And then all this other stuff sort of blossomed. So I want to give a couple editorial shout outs too. right now on RottenTomatoes.com. You can check out all the Fast and Furious movies ranked via tomato meter, mm. but also our buddy Alex Vo did a great article where it's how to watch the Fast and Furious Very movies I love this. in order. And it's not as chronological as you might think, at least in terms of release date. So here's how to watch them in order. You go one, two, right? Mm -hmm. Easy enough. And then you skip to four, right. Fast and Furious. And then you go to Fast Five. Then you go to Fast Six. Then you go back to Tokyo Drift, a movie that we already covered on an episode of this show. Yeah. Then you go to seven, eight, Hobbs and Shaw, and then nine. And obviously, one of the reasons why we're talking about this movie is that we yeah. have the big Fast 10 coming out in theaters on May 19th. So, uh, John, yeah. Jacqueline. 54% rotten is the score for The Fast and the Furious. That's the OG. And then it the movie stayed in pretty rough, like, rotten territory until we hit Fast Five. Mm. And then with the exception of the most recent entry, yeah. Fast Nine, everything else has been fresh. Fast Nine is clinging to 59%. So yeah. it's so close. But this one, 54%. I'll start with you, Mr. Roca. Yeah. Is Rotten Tomatoes wrong? Yes, 100% it's wrong. <laughs> the OG is like 70 or 80%. It's ridiculous. 
Clearly, these critics at that time did not understand street culture and racing culture <laughs> and the gift that that is to enjoy this movie. And I think this is such an interesting time because 2001 is when things are changing. New different kinds of franchises are popping up. Remember, we're just now opening the door to superhero franchises in 2000, sure. mm. right, with X-Men and what have you. So we're just opening the door to the possibility here. And here comes a film that is a diverse cast as a fantastic action director coming off Dragon, mm. and then you bring in all these new actors who are going to be in our lives for multiple yeah. years afterwards. So clearly the casting was smart as well. And you take advantage of people loving that 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 vibe that people have over Top Gun or Point Break, that kind of 80s action vibe coming back here in Fast and Furious, the original. And it's no surprise that when The Rock shows up, it goes fresh. And when The Rock leaves, it doesn't. <laughs> so it's very interesting to consider that as well. I am when not giving that whole... man that much power. His head is big enough. <laughs> really? Physically Sit. and figuratively? Literally. <laughs> Definitely physically, because after rewatching The Fast and the Furious, I watched Fast Five last night, and I'm like, God, this guy's huge. Yes, and his is. head is even bigger with the beard somehow. <laughs> I mean, DJ's going to DJ, man. Yeah. Listen. Uh, yeah. Jack, what is uh, Rotten Tomatoes wrong with that 54% Rotten score? I'm so glad that I'm back, because, yeah, this is one where I can't even understand how it's rotten in right. the sense of like, I understand how it's rotten in the abstract, but I really, when you look at it against other comedic, really interesting uh, main character sort of action films, it really rises above mm, yeah. to anything else that we would call fresh. Like, I'm sorry, I don't know how you could love Die Hard and then think that this is crap, but I think it has to do with what John <laughs> mm. was saying about at that time, because really, look, that, this was this was uh, universal and like landmark yeah. to have this kind of cast be an integrated cast. Because remember, we had already had movies like Belly. We had already had movies yeah. like uh, New Jack City, where you had mm -hmm. maybe more of like crime or mm -hmm. even sort of like young people doing bad things. Uh, movies we already had all of those, but they were very segregated. Mm -hmm. It was very much like you know Harlem Nights over here or something like that. This is one where you not only made it younger, you made it a different type of crime. You have, like, espionage on, like, the internet. Like, this was still yeah. at a time when, like, that dude that's a part of the crew who was the hacker, he was the coolest guy in the room. This was yeah. back when you could make people think someone like Hugh Jackman was a hacker. Like, right. that was this was that Swordfish, time of the internet. Yeah. And so I feel <laughs> it was a changing of the garb. This was still a time when old school reviewers like Roger Ebert and Richard Roper yes. were still, like, on Daily Beats. But you also had this new brash brand of, like, the ain't it cool sort of, like, mm. internet folks. And this was right at that intersection. I mean, this is four years after Rotten Tomatoes started. This was a movie that really sort of, I think, exemplified when that divide started happening between commercial audiences and what they wanted to see and what everyone agreed was a good movie. Good point. Yeah. And it's interesting you bring up the, the diversity that this movie yeah. has because, you know, Jack makes a good point. If you look at a movie that came out in the mid-90s, something like Dead Presidents, where it still felt like, oh, okay, that's this particular culture mm. in this particular world in this particular city. But with The Fast and the Furious, it was so multicultural. Yep. And yep. it wasn't necessarily about any one particular ethnicity. It was more about being young and finding yes. some Something that is our outlet. How can we express ourselves that maybe is frowned upon by right. the yeah. law, but it also makes us feel like our, we have value and it's how our family yeah. and that you hear that mm. F word a lot in this franchise. Yeah. It's how our family comes together and breaks bread and a lot of uh, delicious barbecue chicken. So <laughs> I will, before I turn it over to two minutes with Tim. I'm going to ask Jacqueline for the synopsis. And again, Ooh. this is not the whole franchise. <laughs> this is just this movie. I don't want you to worry about any other stuff that happens. Just the fast and the furious from 2001. All right. So actually, all right, we're, we're just going to go with this one because I forgot Paul Walker's character's name, but we're going to go it off the dome. Uh, Here Brian. we go. Brian. Yeah. Brian. Thank you. I was like, what was his name? Sorry. Well, his Sorry. real name is Brian <laughs> and his fake name is Brian. So yes. it's easy <laughs> yeah. for him to be undercover. <laughs> it's, fake. it's just a different, uh, I think it's Brian Earl Spilner is the fake name and then yeah. Brian O'Connor is the real name. I mean, and also Delroy, I don't need to know his name in this one, but we're going to go. <laughs> so we start with our lead character, Paul Walker, who is your average Johnny Utah type stand-in yes. who is tasked <laughs> to go undercover because, you know, he used to like to do street racing back in the day before oh, yeah. he became a narc. And they want to send him undercover because they suspect that a group of street racers are involved in a high-stakes robbery ring. And they suspect that it is the Toretto family car shop 
motorcycle ring led by the very charismatic and incredible Vin Diesel. And a his, nice restaurant. Too. And a nice restaurant. Yeah, you know, yeah. all of their fun little Try businesses. Tuna. Tuna. <laughs> and his, you know, sister, who Paul Walker, of course, uh, through the course of this movie, instantly has eyes on. Mm. Paul, of course, ingratiates himself by, you know, being bold and brash enough to think he can challenge Don to a race, losing his car and his dignity in the process. Through the course of the events of the film, we find out that, yeah, the Toretto's are robbing people. It is eventually discovered that Paul is an FBI agent, but it is only before the last big score, the one score that's going to take them out of the game, that they come together and he saves them in a way from the fate that they are ah, destined to from be From the in. fate of the furious. That's amazing. I mean, he's trying to be, he's not even an FBI agent. He's working he, he, with the FBI. FBI. It's right. so funny because he's an undercover cop, but the cops are working with the feds Pizza, on this. Yes. And so it's almost like the cops are auditioning for the FBI. <laughs> yes. Like, this yeah. is their big showcase night. If, if they're comedians, they're like, hey, guys, the FBI's in the crowd. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to do 10 minutes and see if they like me. And that 10 minutes happens to be trying to break up this ring before the truckers start fighting back. Yeah. Yeah. They've got the FBI signs on the uh, on the seats. For this, <laughs> uh, right on the front row for them, for sure. And let's but pretend yeah. for one second like that would actually be the way that it goes. But, you yeah, know, it's right. part, part heist, part uh, family, all Vin Diesel. Yes, all yeah. vroom, vroom. And so now before we get into the Movie Talk segment, we are going to turn it over to our good buddy Tim Ryan, our expert review curation manager here at Rotten Tomatoes. He's going to tell us what the critics were saying at the time of this film's release way back in June of 2001. Hit it, Tim. Two minutes with Tim. If anyone had told you back in 2001 that The Fast and the Furious would spawn eight sequels plus a spinoff and an animated series and become a multi-billion dollar global phenomenon, you'd have thought they were crazy. Sure, it did well at the box office and the reviews were decent, but the idea of a loose Point Break remake being the kickoff for one of the most popular franchises in movie history would have sounded improbable. And the idea that it would eventually win the hearts of the critics would seem even more unlikely, especially after the first four movies were rotten. But here we are 22 years later and Fast 10 is right on the horizon, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's go back to the beginning. The Fast and the Furious is rotten at 54% on the tomato meter with 152 reviews, and it has a 74% audience score. And just as a reminder, we covered the Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift on a previous episode. So what did the critics have to say? In a rotten review, Bruce Kirkland of Jam Movies wrote that the film has the lasting power of a quarter-mile race. When it's over, all you're left with is fumes. However, in a fresh review, Margaret McGurk of the Cincinnati Inquirer wrote, Melodramatic, preposterous, excessive, this movie is all that. Yet it is also magnetically appealing. So that's The Fast and the Furious. Let's kick it back to Jacqueline and Mark, two people who live their lives a quarter mile at a time. Thank you, Tim, and you are family to us. Uh, before we get into movie talk, just a quick, it's now 30 seconds with Mark, that the new special, uh, my stand-up hour, is coming out very soon. You can go to Mark Ellis Live for all the updates on that for the particular release and ways to watch it, so very excited about that. And uh, let's get into movie talk. Hit the music, Brian. And so now we get into talking about this movie. And yeah. as Tim pointed out, you know, I can understand why the immediate sequels to this movie were frowned upon by critics, are rotten on the tomato meter, because if this just feels like somewhat of a fun but forgettable flick where it's just about street racing and eh, we'll get over this and it doesn't quite have the staying power of something like a, a Point Break or The Rock, other 90s action movies, I see why the sequels felt like a cheap imitation of that because you didn't yeah. really have this, like, the cognitive ability back then to see where this franchise was going. Mm. And so to set the, the the sort of foundation of this and have it be about street racing and that culture and then have it go to the heights where it's gone now, I think in retrospect, it's a lot easier to say, oh, the critics got this wrong. But at the time, I would say Rotten Tomatoes is wrong, but I, I think this movie probably lands somewhere in the 60% range. No, you're insane. 70% <laughs> is where it belongs, and you're an insane person to say that. I think Jackie nailed it on the head. We were going through a transition of critics as well. I think this sure. comes out in 2023. This is a much higher score, both audience-wise and critics-wise, I think, as well. And I think that's the difference here. And when you look at the, uh, the, the progression of the series, you're absolutely right. The sequels were a pale imitation of the first movie. And I'm not, I, I think if you 
Finn Vin saw that by not appearing in Tokyo Drift. I think he saw, I'm not going to hang myself or attach myself to this quickly sinking anchor. Let me get out of this. But when The Rock came, it revitalized everything. And I think that changed it. And it was going straight to DVD, I think, in the in the uh, probably the third or fourth film. You could sense the box office wasn't quite there. The interest wasn't quite there. So they were in trouble. The Rock coming in really saved it and add more energy to the franchise. But that being said, you had some really good direct. I mean, Singleton did the second one. Yeah. You have some good Justin Lin coming in. You have some good directors who were a part of this, who understood that there was something in this franchise that appealed to young people and that idea of rebellion and that idea of coming out and having some fun and being dangerous and pushing the limits. These things never change and they're generational and universal. And Jacqueline, you see with the audience score <laughs> being 74% being fresh, I think more where you and John feel the movie mm -hmm. belongs, but you also see it. Another way that people like to speak is with their wallet. So this movie mm -hmm. opened for $40 million, already making its $38 million budget yeah. back. It'd go on to do over $200 million worldwide. But when the DVD came out, on its first day of mm. DVD sales, 2 million copies. Wow. Were. And so, like, you see those numbers, and you're like, maybe there was a generational disconnect between the reviewers of this movie and the audience it was intended for. This was a movie where, as I like to say, there's certain movies that come out. In fact, there's one that's about to come out this summer that I am going to base my entire personality on, <laughs> and that is Oppenheimer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, for those of you not in the visual medium, I'm currently wearing a Barbie shirt. <laughs> so, the, the so the idea that I'm making that my my personality is <laughs> I can't hilarious. wait to see the box office numbers that week. I mean, Barbie be, versus Oppenheimer. Whole Let's thing. Go. But this was a movie that people wanted to make their personality about. I remember seeing this movie at, um, I want to believe that this was the summer in between my freshman and like, College, mm. my freshman year of, of college and my senior year of high school. And the thing I thought was so crazy about that aspect of it was people in the parking lot acting like they were in their drag oh, racing yeah. thing to the point where people had mm -hmm. to make notes about like, hey, don't do this. Like cops would hang out pretty much any night Fast and Furious was in theaters to make sure that people didn't do stupid stuff in the parking lot. And yeah. I say good. I mean, in my, in my last special, Dog Stepfather, I talked about how like, I, like you should not be allowed to drive home after seeing one of these mm -hmm. movies in a theater. Because oh, yeah. you can't handle it. No. Especially yeah. men. We're, we're like shifting as hard as we can and I drive an automatic. Like you should never have to shift every, anything every, this hard. All y'all are acting like you're Rowdy and freaking Tom and, uh, and uh, Cole Trickle <laughs> from Days of Thunder <laughs> driving oh, down the back roads of on. Kawanga in Los Angeles. Like you are not that hard anyway but <laughs> but I see I have the same feeling about this movie that I do something like like Jaws where yeah. Jaws mm. is this heralded classic but the fallout of Jaws and one of the things that even Peter Benchley and Steven Spielberg have expressed some regret for yeah. is it inspired a bunch of dopes to go out and try to hunt great white sharks yeah. who aren't bothering anybody they're not Bruce from the movie they're not eating kids they're just swimming living their lives and right. so you go out and kill the same way where it's like I've had friends that have had their families tragically affected by illegal street racing mm. oh, wow. and so you you see, like, it, it, you know, it's that art, entertainment, does that... It, like, are video games making kids violent? It's, mm. it's that old argument. Look, well, if you can say that women decided to do archery after Katniss Everdeen, <laughs> you cannot deny that there are some people that were skid marks on a highway because mm -hmm. of Fate and or Fast and Furious. Like, mm. you can't, like, you can't make that distinction. And let's be real, the thought process for a dude that says, I look cool riding down the street is even worse yeah. than um, some girl that's like, I want to be Katniss and bow like this, <laughs> you know? Like, you know, like, I volunteer as tribute. This is just a totally different calculus. The only thing I was going to add to you where you yeah. were talking about with, with Fast and Furious is, yeah, it's so morphed, it's so changed, but with The Rock, it's so crazy to me that a man that is only improved by either ensemble or dual performances yeah, yeah, yeah. is so obsessed with being the only man standing. Mm. Because the only way mm. that he works the best, look at his, some of his best work. When he worked with Kevin Hart, yes. like, look, Kevin Hart humanizes him in a way that he cannot appreciate. It's like when when Danny DeVito and Arnold Schwarzenegger mm -hmm. do a movie together. You don't get why it works, but it just works. You know what <laughs> I mean? Know. Like, it's just like that dynamic. Him missing that is it's it in my opinion is really awful. But yeah. I also feel yeah. like th that there's a there is a point break uh, like kind of line. Oh, to totally. Draw. And yeah. I think it, Patrick Swayze could carry a movie by himself. And, yeah. and right, there's proof right, right, that right. Keanu Reeves we've seen since then could. Right. I don't know that we had the litmus test back when Point Break came out. Right. And so what I would say about Paul Walker and Vin Diesel in this movie, the first one, is that I think that this movie helps them out by pairing them together. Yes. Because as you see in the immediate sequels, whether it's Too Fast, Too Furious or Fast and Furious, either one of them carrying the movie by themselves mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily work as well as having them 
play off one another in that dynamic. Yeah, I've tried to watch shows with just Jackie or just Mark, and it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, saying, no, it's the same you. chemistry. I mean, no, honestly, no, I'd right. be the first one to admit it. I <laughs> am a prickly heifer, and the fact that he puts up with me is the testament to his niceness. And I can say, when I'm on the road, I've been doing shows, and people yell out, where's Jack? <laughs> <laughs> like, this isn't so Rotten Tomatoes, this is wrong. This so is yeah. no. I really, no, it's not even close. They, uh, don't yeah. lie. Where's just... the girl who likes uh, Constantine? No. I want to talk about her. Don't well, lie. All one. they're saying is where's Molly? Like, I know what they're really uh, asking you about. Yeah. You're you the might. dog stepfather. Bring her out! Uh, no, this is true. And the, the other aspect of this that is very similar, we haven't mentioned this yet, two point break, is Ted Levine is essentially Gary Busey. Yeah. That is the same character Ooh, yeah. in yeah. essence. Because he's like, oh, I'll protect you, but you know, you're gonna you're coming close. We gotta get some results, all this kind of stuff. And of course, just like you've got in the 80s and the 90s, you gotta have that black FBI cap. Girl. He's like, I need results. Yeah, uh, your ass you gotta is get grass. Delroy you in gotta there. have him I in love there. How so. many times he threatens like like yeah. the exact uh, because I love when a when a grizzled FBI <laughs> like starts like he, he he has a specific hour. He's yeah. like, okay, we need this in 48 hours. Now, now you got 36 hours. It's like you got one day to do yeah. this. It's like, oh man, this this clock's really ticking on this. <laughs> Because there's so many elements in this movie. Like, this would be a, a fine film if Paul Walker didn't have the backstory of him being a cop trying mm. to infiltrate this gang. If he's just trying to break into this racing world. Mm. Like, like that's pretty much what Tokyo Drift is. It's yeah. just, hey, I'm yeah, an right. outsider, and I'm trying to get in this new culture, and I think I got some game, so let's see how I stack up against the best of the best. Mm -hmm. And this movie adds on this action element that I found was fascinating and that sometimes I'm going to go back and watch this movie for just the interactions and seeing the family and the culture. But other times you do want to see some of those action sequences that, by the way, are really well shot. Yeah. yeah. Rob Cohen is so smart in this because remember, Rob Cohen at this time was kind of finding so in his oats, feeling things out, doing these action films, understanding what the public liked. And so he understood, look, let's start with an action piece to start off the whole thing, like James Bond, mm. and then let's not go too long without another action sequence. I rewatched the film for the show today, and I was just like, wow, they, there's like 10 minutes of conversation, then action sequence. Mm -hmm. 10 minutes of conversation, chase sequence. 10 minutes of conversation, car chasing. So it's very smart the way he does it. And I, I will, the street racing stuff, I think this is a genius thing by them to take advantage of it. This culture already existed. They just found a movie. It's like Madonna. There was voguing before Madonna did it, okay? Mm. Madonna just brought it into the mainstream. <laughs> yeah, this yeah. is what this film did. It tapped into something that was already happening in LA in a lot of cities and brought it out for people to enjoy. And like you said, the guys feel cool. It's a mm. guy move. Yeah, there are some strong ladies in this movie, absolutely. Michelle Rodriguez, Jordana Brewster. But- it's a lot of dudes. So the dudes driving their little Priuses or whatever they were driving back then feel badasses because of this movie. Like Top Gun influenced people to sign up for the Navy. This movie influenced more people to employ to try to try street racing or get into street racing. Or just but be it interested existed. in cars. Or, or, or just cars. be interested in yeah. cars. Because I would say I would say that yeah. was the um, male approach to it. There yeah. was a lot of girls like mm -hmm. myself, as Mark knows. Yeah. I'm a muscle car queen. I, I don't have one anymore because <laughs> stupid <laughs> gas prices. But he's he rode in my Challenger back when I had it. Nice. You know what I mean? All you have to do is, is is take cold water a couple times in the morning over the, from the valley to hear and to realize I don't really want that Mustang anymore. I really don't. I also there's still a muscle car in our house though. We still have muscle. Nice. We have the the company car is muscle right. car. Oh right it's right the, right. It's the Mustang convertible. Okay, I was gonna nice. wait and tell the story, but I'll, I'll tell you all quickly now. So as Jacqueline knows, I was in the market for a new car forever. Mm. Oh yes. And there's a certain electric car that we that she kept. <laughs> Every time she found like a TikTok or a tweet about how this electric car maybe doesn't perform as well as advertised, yeah, yeah, yeah. she would send it to me as a warning. So Also I, because I didn't want to support that company and I was basically like, don't do it, Mark. Do you even know what kind of car I got? I did see it. Yeah, okay. you sent okay. me the picture, which okay. I loved oh, yeah, yeah. because I'm okay. not saying that that company, let's right. be real, they had some stuff going on in World War II, but... <laughs> There's a lot of companies. There's a lot of companies, but at least with Henry Blank. Yeah, girl. Volkswagen. <laughs> There's other companies that also had bad stuff let, going let, on. Let's be the real. They this just don't a... have the living living embodiment of apartheid living at sure, the top of sure. theirs. But like, I also test drove a Mustang. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, I just figured, <laughs> you know, I'm a man of a certain age. It's time sure. to get a Mustang. Yeah. It's time that to get red that sports one. car. Yeah. My dad was a big sports car guy, and I'm like, this is what I'm going to grow into. Right. Y'all, I turned the Mustang on at the dealership, and the engine was so loud. I'm like, I don't like it. <laughs> I, I want quiet. Oh. I don't want to pull into my neighborhood, my nice suburban neighborhood, pull into my driveway and have the neighbors be appalled because I'm out late at night. I'm oh. out telling jokes. I get home at midnight. Yours? Here comes Vin Diesel oh. home again. So I got a car that's uh. very quiet. I went quiet. I went luxury over 
what no, a no, fast No, no, tell what it is. is tell it what a, it is. Because, like, let's just... I'm past my prime when it comes to street racing, okay. is the point. What's really impressive about this movie mm. is how ahead of its time it was. Because going back to the diversity for a minute, yeah. this movie was sort of inspired by an article in, I think it was Vibe magazine, mm. in mm -hmm. 1998. But it was talking about New York City yeah. suburbs yes. having street racing. That was primarily white kids doing it. Right. And so the fact that a studio took a chance on making this in L.A., and having it, obviously, Paul Walker's white, but pretty much the rest of the cast that primarily are people of color. Mm -hmm. So to take that out of the suburban white kids and put that in L.A. and have it shot in L.A. And as as people who live in L.A., you can tell oh. th it feels like collateral where it's like, oh, I know that street. Yep. I know that. Mm -hmm. And so 100%. you really do get the Los Angeles vibe of this movie. Absolutely. And the only thing I would add to that is the main reason for that is the ethnic ambiguity yep. and also charis uh, charisma sure. of Vin Diesel. Yep. Because for folks who don't know, one of the greatest things I, I will say about Vin Diesel, Vin Diesel is a pure movie guy, which I say when you know those people, like Tom Cruise is a movie guy. It's the guy that wakes up every day to watch a movie. Mm -hmm. Quentin Tarantino is a movie guy. These are people that are just obsessed about movie and movie making. He's a huge nerd. A huge yeah. nerd. Yeah. Vin Diesel was having such trouble as a former model turned actor getting work that he made his own short film about being multiracial mm -hmm. and biracial and how he never fit into a box. That movie got in front of uh, Steven Spielberg, who cast him in Saving Private Ryan. Right, right, right. And that same charisma is what the producers of this saw. And they were like, we can, this guy is <laughs> the new version of Patrick Swayze. And that sort of, like, so Vin Diesel was the part. And because he was ethnically ambiguous, they're like, we don't want people asking what he is the whole movie. Mm. Just put a whole bunch of everybody around him so that way they're kind of confused. That's yeah. very <laughs> It's very smart. literally what they Absolutely. did. That That's was how you literally get away. what they did. It wasn't that long ago where studios did not want to have interracial relationships yes. as their leads in film. So having an ambiguous guy like Vin Diesel helps to anchor the films you said so well. The white guy's your entry point for the audience you want from that angle. And then you've got, you surround him with people who are not over, like or Jordana Brewster is Panamanian American. Yes. She is a Latina. But she's but also an ethnic. But she's ambiguous, right. exactly. and that was the reason why it they helps cast it her. All work exactly, and, and then yeah, Michelle just, Rodriguez doing overtly, you very clearly is this. And they, but then there's also Asian characters, yes. there's white characters, Johnny there's Tran. black characters, yeah, yeah. and I think just again, <laughs> and and this is the thing that I will say to people that don't maybe get it about African American and some of how people don't see blackness every place or ethnicity every place yeah. that it that they should or could you know i have people all the time thinking you know biracial people are oh she's like no she's just black in this other thing mm. or just black altogether there's just plain black people that look like they're multiracial right. mm. and that is another aspect of you look at somebody sure. like jasmine guy she's just black she doesn't have nobody else mixed with her she's right. a black creole but that's you know what i mean like the african-american look is already multinational yeah. because of so much race mingling and so again it's it was a moment of necessity that ends up being something incredible because look at what Singleton does in the next movie. He adds in more darker skin mm -hmm. black actors, yeah. completely changes the dynamic even more. And Therese. one of those actors, unfortunately, was not Ja Rule, who did not return for <laughs> any of the <laughs> well, subsequent to be fair. movies. Uh, but look ja, at, yeah, we that, get Tyrese and Ludacris. Yeah. Tyrese and Ludacris, again, watching Fast Five last night, they're just such, every time they show up in these mm. movies, they're so, they're such breaths of fresh air yeah. because it's so serious and we mm. got to do this thing and then they're just kind of cracking jokes. What I forgot about the first movie is that Vin Diesel, like his first couple lines, he's kind of funny and he's mm -hmm. kind of like, like, like just like sarcastic or just like tossing stuff off to the side. He's really good in this movie. And I love one of my favorite scenes is when we first see Dom from behind. We yeah. see this giant back. There was this comic book character from Image Comics in the 90s, and his name was Deathblow. Yeah. And he had like the biggest lats I ever saw. Yeah. And so it, it, he looks like Deathblow just hanging out in the back of his restaurant, the family business, and he's lurking like the T-Rex in Jurassic Park, mm -hmm. where you're just like, what the hell is that thing? What's it gonna do? And then you see him, and again, I don't know that he could have carried this movie by himself. Yes. I liked him as that looming presence, and I don't know that Paul Walker could have carried this movie by himself, no. but to put them all in there, and, and like, to have that entire ensemble not just be there, but actually like play like, like valuable roles in yeah. this movie. The women kind of run this movie uh, from the side. By the way, the first reason why I watched this movie had nothing to do with Paul Walker mm. or with Vin Diesel. It had to do with the fact that I loved Girl Fight, mm -hmm. the Girl Fight, which oh, had yeah. Michelle Rodriguez yeah, directed right. by Karen Kusama. And like, I was just like, 
that's my girl. Because, mm-hmm. like, you know, I don't know if you could tell. I wasn't really big into the dresses. <laughs> <laughs> Still ain't. <laughs> don't let the red carpet fool y'all. Uh, but yeah. no, like, Letty was a huge part of it. And then I also appreciate, as we get into the later series, how they had to change that character so she could be multidimensional. Mm-hmm. Right. Because for as much as both her and Jordana kept women in this franchise, which kept the franchise going, let's keep it real. Yeah. Fast cannot just run on male aggression and testosterone. No, the whole thing's about family. I, yeah. It's kind of hard about, to start a family without women. Exactly. Well, and They're then, kind of the reason why we do it. And look later, the the female characters we get, Charlize Theron, yeah. Helen Mirren, uh, Nic- uh, Natalie Emanuel. Rita Moreno's in the Rita new one. Rita Moreno, Moreno and right. Brie Larson. Like, it's just like every time they add these women in here, the dynamics and the flavors continue to change. Because yeah. all of the male are just such broad archetypes that again it just keeps it grounded and this movie showed how grounded it could be and yeah. we have we have like the tech nerd in this one yeah um we have like is sort of the sidekicks the tech nerd uh, jesse chad Lindbergh. that's yeah. what i thought jordana brewster should have gone for because initially before <laughs> she before you? she falls in love with with brian o'connor yes. or uh, you know earl Sp- spilner at the time she is kind of <laughs> hooking up with vince and i'm like there's no way she likes vince no 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 and she's by the way, Vince, Vince, Vince I, I guess, is convinced that they're hooking up. She Vince, has not hooked up I was with Vince. Say, she, she's never hooked up with Vince? Never hooked up with Vince. Never hooked once. up with Vince? I do no. not think Vince has any. Vince is Okay, like, good, because he he's the guy. Maybe it was a pity kiss when they were 17. Maybe. He play. you never be the guy, and I try to tell yeah. the, the, youth, the youth this, never be the guy at the party who's playing the guitar. It screams for attention. We saw what happened to the acoustic guitar in Animal House. Yes. And now he's at a house party post-race, yes. and he's got his electric guitar plug in and he's got some girl hanging on him and he's 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 hitting some Zach Wild riff and it's like dude you're trying way too hard yeah but I also love that he's a character in this movie because you always have the person who is tough but they're not as tough as they think they are yeah, yeah. He, he gets replaced and, and you got to have that aspect yeah. to add conflict if Brian replaces they him know each other Brian does replace him yeah. but let's be real in the grand scheme of things Vince was right Vince was like, I do not yeah, trust this dude. Yeah, and that dude right. was a narc. So you're like, right. in retrospect, mm. I wanted to point a couple of things out <laughs> about this point. movie. <laughs> is Vince gets such a bad rap. And somebody needs to recut the Fast and the Furious the way they did when they recut the Karate Kid to make Brian, <laughs> to make LaRussa into That's the villain. Idea. Because Vince let, the hero. let's just be real. He was a narc. Right. So like, the fact that this like... And Dom cre- didn't see it. These career criminals did not pick up that the goofy white boy might not be exactly what he says he is is kind of hilarious You know to me. what? You might have turned me around on Vince. <laughs> I'm maybe, listening. Maybe Jordana uh, uh, spent many nights crying on Vince's shoulders about other dudes and Vince was like, if I could only just get a shot with you, I could treat you really well. He's the toughest version of the guy that gives you a ride to the airport. Absolutely. Yeah. He and probably he's, has, and know, he has a good judge of character. Yes. <laughs> he literally said, Son of a gun, this, guy me on this guy is not what he thinks he is. I thought he was a douche, but he's not a douche. And okay. he, he fights off I mean, the by the way, he does, he yeah. does like a lot of of a douchey thing, so I'm not trying to say whatever. His tactics are not right. Yeah, right. That, like, he doesn't have the charisma. Brian has all the charisma and none of the convictions. He has all the convictions right. and none of the charisma. So again, as somebody that has maybe been accused of the same, yeah. I, I, I'm not saying I get it, but I understand. You, you know, Jesse I mean? Love, you got to explain to me, though, because that is a dweeb and a half. I don't know why you think I mean, she would go with a guy like because, that. Because he's Chad intelligent. <laughs> he's got, he's uh, got the great, smarts. Jack, yes, excellent point, actually. He went to Wake Forest. That's Remember ex- oh, who please, he is. I know. I know. <laughs> no, he's like, I know that tattoo, for God's sake. <laughs> he's yeah. a nice guy you can trust and not cheat on. He and tra- I figured Jordana Brewster, for better than either a fake and street, who really uh, turns it. out to be a cop. He bet his or Jetta. A, his dad's Jetta, no less. That's no way that Jordana's really going to end up with. You were really firing shots at Mark that you guy, don't realize. Okay, and it's who's so gonna be, mean. Who's going to be the multi-millionaire? At the end of the day, who's going to be the multi-millionaire? <laughs> not him. <laughs> Johnny Tran shot him. At this table, absolutely No, it's same. not the street racer. Johnny it's Tran killed him. guy who can... <laughs> I mean, let's be he real. He had a short life, and you guys are just pissing on his grave. Can I? Can I just add this one thing to be true? This, this whole he that guy became his avatar the minute he made eyes at Jordana. Oh, that's like because let's be real. Good point. I know why I was watching the first Fast and Furious, and I think I know why Mark was watching too. They, actually, you I, have a type, sir. I would oh. consider myself more of a Michelle Fair. Rodriguez guy. I've been a fan of Michelle Rodriguez uh, for okay. ever. I know okay. you're more of a Michelle Rodriguez fan, but let yeah. me be really clear. Yeah. Michelle Rodriguez is the guy that it's the Madeline, it's the it's the you marry Jackie. You, you, and Jordan yeah. is your Jackie. 
Mm. Yeah, okay. you yeah. date Michelle, yeah. you well, marry Jordan. I date Michelle when you're young. <laughs> That's but sort of how, how it ended up for uh, for good old Brian O'Connor. <laughs> you know, he he ended up married, or I guess I don't know if they ever tied the knot. I guess they, they had a baby. That's good enough. They had a baby. They, they had a baby. And in this world, that counts. Can uh, I give a little bit of a shout out to Lindbergh? He was just in Picard season three. Yeah, of Picard, he played yeah. one of the changelings. So yeah. still working that guy. I respect. will go one step further, and I will mm-hmm. give Ja Rule a shout out because he's great in this movie. Ja Rule is fantastic right. in this movie. Brian has a question. Who's the worst actor in the movie? I would have to give it to Ja Rule. So, uh, but Ja Rule was doing ja. exactly what he needed ja. to do, I love though. Because ja. yeah. he's doing, like, basically, like, you know, he's doing Billy Porter's role from mm-hmm. Pose, which, you know. Oh. He's, well. But he, not, and a lot, not a when lot of rappers racing, no. would lose out to the woman. Yeah, true. So, Billy respect Billy Porter ja. was such more of a mentor in Pose. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and Ja Rule is sort of like. He's the guy, he's just good enough to hang around. Yeah. yeah. You know, he's sort of that, that that gym rat, and I appreciate that about him. And it also but he's like the, gives us some comedic relief in there, too. This is what this guy does. This is what this, you know, he's like the, he's yeah. the hype man. Yeah, true, very yeah, true. Yeah, but I mean, he he did his role. Yeah. And, and there was, so, so I guess the story goes is that John Singleton wanted Ja Rule back oh. for Too Fast, Too Furious. Okay. And they made multiple, like, attempts to reach out to Ja Rule's people in Atlanta and they never got back to him. They blew and they blew up John Singleton. Wow. And 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 according to, to Ja Rule, he's like, well, yeah, it's just not the direction he wanted his film career to go in. And he did have some other movies and appearances at that. <laughs> he wanted but then they were then then you you bring in Ludacris and it's like, oh man, I I, I don't know what it's like to be inside Ja Rule's head, but you gotta think, oh it, maybe it'd be fun. They could still bring him back though. They, they brought uh, could still bring it back. They, they brought, brought everybody back, back in the last yeah. one. Yeah, yeah I mean, true. look. I mean, <laughs> I don't think Jaw Rule's cachet that he had at that yeah. time. Just like let he him had drive cash. a car in Fast yeah. Ten. Maybe just, he doesn't. If he does another song with J Lo, maybe that puts just, him back in the pop culture them, zeitgeist. Fair. Have Vin roll up to a streetlight, and whoever is in the cast now, it put Helen Mirren and John Cena in his car, and he just looks at uh, and it's Jaw Rule, and they're just like, "What's up?" And that, that, that's all I need. You know, it's so funny. They've gone through so many chases. They've done so many elaborate things. Still to this day, that first race with Brian is one of the greatest yeah. to watch. It's like that's just such a great street race. And just the way they had that dynamic, the way they showed, I don't know, the way they shot it, like just like the, those first push-ins with the dude with the camera. Mm. Like that was one of those and first that was times. Such, you like, really... Exciting and inventive yeah. sort of uh right. uh filmmaking back then. I would hesitate to tell anybody, yeah, you need a laptop while you're street racing at 140 miles an hour in your car. That seems a little dangerous to be looking away from the road to hit buttons, but seeing like those nitrous oxide boosts, it does like it does fill you up with oh, a charge yeah. watching. Oh, yeah, yeah, very much so. Let me ask you guys, isn't that cheating? Isn't that steroids? Everybody's isn't doing that it. Steroids? It's it, it's it's the it's the 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 summer of ninety eight with McGuire and Sosa. If everybody's cheating, if everybody's juicing, then you have to level the playing field. You are ridiculous. Everybody, it, no, Derek every, Jeter didn't take a damn syringe. They look so you cut under, that crap out. They look under the hood. Uh-huh. They look under the hood before the raid. Mm-hmm. They see what everybody's got. They know they have nitrous oxide boost. I don't think everybody's got NOS, though. That's why I think it's a little bit cheating. But all right. I mean, but this is illegal street racing, <laughs> sir. Like, you were trying to bring in PGA Jack, rules so into right. a street Jack, fight. Right. I'm you're like, right. what are you doing? Yes, I'm too straight laced to street race. That's the truth. Excuse me. Did your club hit um, the sand before? <laughs> it's like, guy at the pickup game calling a foul. That is <laughs> such a narc move, I've man. I've got blood on my face. <laughs> it's a foul. <laughs> it's a foul. Oh. Jack, I told you this guy's a Sorry, cop. that was that was gendered Jeez. and rude, but like legitimately, <laughs> no, legitimately. Uh, what is what is the scene in this movie that gets John Roca going? Oh, uh, what Jackie said. That yeah? scene in there is fantastic. But because she already talked about it, I will add the uh, end scene with Vince hanging off the truck and everything like that. That yeah. whole sequence mm-hmm. is so incredibly well shot by Cohen, and we revisit. We don't overuse. We revisit. The car sliding under the truck thing that Letty does, which is so great. Yeah. We saw that in the opening of the film. We don't see it again until that car chase scene. And I thought it was fantastic. It was Road Warrior-esque. <laughs> and uh, and then you have and you wrap up the storyline by having Brian save Vince, the one guy he had to convince out of the whole crew. And how does he do it? He reveals himself as a cop by the end. So Vince was right, but Brian still saved him. So yes. it's just, it's, it's there's so much that goes on in that scene that is so great. That works so well, and this is some of the best Vin Diesel acting you'll ever see. When he slow, when he realizes that Brian is a cop, he doesn't overdo it. He doesn't go too far like some other actors do. He lets it wash over him, and he's conflicted between one, this guy who's saving his friend from third grade mm. and this guy who he has befriended now become being a cop. So there's all of that going on for him, 
And I appreciate the acting. So I love that scene for that. Yeah, he's got he, Vin Diesel kind of has that that confidence in this movie. Dom Toretto does where he can look at somebody and he knows exactly yeah. the moral fiber they're made of. He may be a cop, but he also knows who this person right. is. And I think that that's like one, one of Dom's talents. The scene that I that I appreciate in this movie for the most part is when we have that quiet moment and it's part real like emotional just bro talk and it gets a little Kevin Bacon in the barn dancing in Footloose territory <laughs> is when Dom takes Brian in to see his car and he gives the backstory mm. of his dad and and he has these lines that are just tough to get like when he actually looks another man in the eye and says I live my life a quarter mile at a time that's hard to get out and make it convincing yeah but he does it's in the trailer and it kills I'm dude. gonna say <laughs> name an actor who could pull that off better than Vin Diesel Fair. you'd be hard pressed no, no you're right. and it has to have that gravel I live like it's gotta have that like <laughs> I live my life like it's gotta feel the weight of that moment like a quarter mile is mm -hmm. a big weight I'm like Mm. Usain Bolt does that in like a minute, dude. Like, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're going to be all right. But the thing also I want to appreciate with this when we're watching it is we had like a bona fide sex scene and a sexy sex scene in yeah. the middle of this action yeah. movie. And honestly, yeah. like, at the... I am sorry if movies do. If I have to start just making a bunch of really, really, really like a, uh, Adrian Lynn sex Ooh. movies to bring the sex back to cinema Mama because loves we her romantic novels. have no sex in movies anymore, and we wonder why every, like a third of men under twenty five have never known a woman. What was the last great sex scene woman. that we saw in a movie? Eternals, and that's sad. Oof. I'm joking. I don't know. <laughs> I'm joking. No, that's yeah. not. Uh, the last really good one that the I saw. The notebook had a good one, but they never clean up afterwards and always bothered me. <laughs> I can't, I like, can't. Like they finish, there's yeah. clearly no prophylactic usage. Mm. And they're in this like kind of house that he's still building. And then they just cuddle the rest of the night. And I'm like, dude, yeah. you got to go pee right he now. He did not put that wow. on her. Prophylactic, he <laughs> said. They didn't, there was yeah. no contraception. Yeah, kids, in the old days, we used to call them prophylactics. Jesus Christ. Yeah. This is the Don't other. use lambskin. <laughs> use latex. I remember being taught that in yeah, sex ed and being like, what? Who has a lambskin? Yeah, lambs, oh that's my weird. Where's that? Yeah. There, I, for sh I would say for shows, though, if you guys aren't watching Obsession on Netflix, there is some great sex scenes uh, in that. It's on TV. Yeah, it's on TV. It's but a version of damage. But not even in movies, but yeah. in movies. There's um, something about being in a dark theater and shoving popcorn in your face. I guess so. Watching people copulate. Uh. I, look, I don't care. Give yourself over to the moment. These, if, if they're think. doing all that dangerous things with cars, you think they're not banging? Can we get a little, oh, like, you know what I mean? This is a very sexy cast. Well, that's what I was, that's what I was gonna say, actually, is that there actually are a bunch of sex scenes in Fast and Furious movies. They just go vroom, vroom. Mm. Like, that, that is a sex scene. Making love to your car is a real thing. Yeah, they sure. do it constantly in these movies. Fair. And now we got a new one coming out. Mm, May yeah. 19th, Fast 10. Yeah. Are we excited still? Are, because they're so preposterous, but they're also fun to watch with these ridiculous action sequences. I know that uh, like we're done after the next movie. Yeah, Fast I 11. think. But are we really done? Do we want to be done? Mm, no. 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 Because it can be rebooted. It can be reimagined. Because it's really, it's about... It's about the franchise. It's about these characters. It's about this idea of coming together for something. I don't think that you you can replace it. Like, this mm. dynamic works, but get a good casting director on it. You can find another dynamic that works. You think so? I do. Reboot the whole thing. Because, again, it was a reboot to begin with. Like, they did this with Point Break. And honestly, if they could have kept making Point Breaks so that with that level of cast, they would have. There was a film called The Fast and the Furious that came out in 1954. Yes. Uh -huh. And I think Roger Corman helped with a story on it. It was a different kind. Of, it was this guy, and I think he, like, stole a truck and he was trying to get down to Mexico. Falls in love along the way. They both mm. end up, like, like, crossing the border okay. But uh, John Roca, that was Vin's dad, I think. How mm. you know, how far down the road can we see these movies going? Oh, I think Jackie's one hundred percent right. You don't even have to skip a beat. They're already laying the groundwork for his son to become a street racer yeah. already. Yeah. In fact, you see him being highlighted in the new trailer yeah. with, hey, I'm handing you my son, my brother, John, John Cena. Take my son and take care of him while I'm going to this. His son is going to figure this out, be a part of this, and they're going to absolutely, like you said, And that said, was the reason they didn't bring in John Cena in just right. to come do one movie. John Cena yeah. is about to start another thing because yeah. it's just about populating, and then maybe on TV, maybe someplace else. You know, it doesn't really particularly matter where they go. Yeah, and I, I listen, when... When Fast 9 came out, that was when we were still knee-deep in the COVID stuff, and they did a, pr a premiere for it or a screening for it in L.A. I drove up from San Diego to L.A. to see Fast 9 at the TLT 
theater there because I worship this franchise. What was your top speed? Mm. Uh, Getting up there on the highway. Well, in San Diego, <laughs> you can go 90 comfortably Fair. on the highway, which yeah. is insane. Something I had to get used to when I moved Well, there. Texas is like that, so I've been like that. It's scary. It's like that drive to Vegas where to. you're like, oh my God, I'm yeah. going 100. Jeez. The drive is... from Coachella <laughs> to Los Angeles, <laughs> yeah. it's like in Texas, you're on the Autobahn and then oh. you get to you get to New Mexico and you're like, what is wrong with y'all? Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Why is my car shaking? <laughs> is it supposed to go this fast? But yeah, but yeah so I think this thing endures. I think it'll keep going. Fast 10 is going to be fantastic. I think Momo is a great injection. Yeah. He's essentially he looks the like rock he's having energy a great time. without the rock. Yeah. yeah. Brie Larson coming in is going to be great as well for them. And, they, and they're bringing Jason Statham in. So you're not going to get Hobbs, but you got Shaw. So I, it's going to work. I do love what this franchise does where it introduces, uh, for a movie or two, like you're just the worst ultimate bad guy. And then, eh, you know what? Okay, I kind of like you. Yeah. Yeah. There's like a begrudging respect. It's almost like the NBA where, there, where, where player mobility is such a thing. <laughs> now where it's like I can be such bitter rivals with John Roca because of mm -hmm. I'm wearing a Lakers uniform and he's wearing a Warriors uniform but then two seasons later lo and behold now I gotta be friends with yeah. you because we're on the same team and we gotta find a way to make this work and yeah. so it does remind me of like the, the landscape of modern sports we should break the news now Dylan Brooks has signed with the Lakers <laughs> for the playoffs so yeah you're absolutely <laughs> right though it's true I don't know I don't even follow basketball like that anymore but I know that dude's bitch <laughs> like I do TikTok no, has told me good. Yeah, like, yeah. So I actually you don't to poke that bear. Nope. So I want to tell you. So a friend of mine actually just got a job at the NHL, nice. and I've been letting them know about something that Mark knows about, but I'm gonna let you know about, oh. which is that I'm a very big romance novel reader, and one of the areas is sports athletes oh. as the like. Focus. Particularly hockey players. Wow. And let me tell you. I get a lot of late night texts listen, about what she's reading. Can I? Listen, okay. wait a minute. Time out, though. Yeah. I've been telling Mark about this for pretty much our entire friendship. So <laughs> wow. six years. The internet is finally catching up to where now the Seattle Krakens, an actual NHL team, if you look at their TikTok, mm -hmm. it's just made for girls like me. It's just wow. thirst traps. I, the the NHL finally got on board with like what, what the yeah. NBA has done. And then the NFL like got on board a couple seasons later is like, hey, look at how sexy these dudes look walking into the arena. Yeah. I, God look, bless those social media managers. Sure. <laughs> I became a Seattle Kraken fan last year because yeah. my girlfriend's boyfriend his son lives in Seattle, and they were going to the games. I have family so, in Seattle. Yeah. I love the logo. So it's a great logo. I, I, got, got, I, got, I wore I got the tank top to work today. Yeah. I worn Listen, the okay, so yeah. all I have to say is yeah. I have been on this camp okay. for years, and this man is my witness because I was indoctrinating <laughs> him into it long nice. before he ever wanted to know. He's like, why are you telling me about this? <laughs> My my friend is a big romance writer, Kay oh. Caitlin Cruz. So oh, if yeah. you find her stuff, enjoy it. Yeah, oh, I, I'll yeah. tell her. Like put NHL people in there. Oh, well, it's they're having a it's big moment. In, either way, the sports romance, and I am currently sports romance. I'm currently dude. writing one about the baseball dude because I am obsessed with him. Shoate Otani. Oh, Shoate Otani. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Otani. Right. He is the thing that romance novels were built off of. I don't know what, <laughs> how it translates into the bedroom if you're a great hitter and a great pitcher, but yeah. we'll Hello. see. And Jacqueline's new novel. If you can make you listen, I did not think we were going to end our the Fast and the Furious conversation <laughs> with talk of sports romance, but, but that's why this podcast is great. <laughs> while you listen to us here at Rotten Tomatoes is wrong. Subscribe, like, rate, review, all that good stuff. And now for our big outro, Brian, hit the music. All right, it's been so great having you back thank in studio, you, man. my man. I love you guys, and it's been great to be here, so thank you for having me. Last awesome. time we had you was very, what was it, The Greatest Showman, I want to I say? I think it was yeah, Greatest wow. Showman. Something yeah. like that. Maybe that's why you weren't on the show. Maybe we put you on a year <laughs> restriction for singing Jackie. too many show tunes. Yeah, Jackie did not like that movie. No, it's I very still true. don't, but I will say I've seen worse musicals since. Oh, yeah. They, cats happened. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Woof. <laughs> Tom Matt. Stoppard is still working on it. He's still trying to fix it. <laughs> I, I I want Jacqueline to be like the next great like Broadway theater critic. And anytime she sees a bad play, all she has to say is, well, it wasn't as bad as the Cats movie. Yeah, Cats happened, man. Cats happened. Like we, I watched that in London. Speaking we of which, I will say this. I will be seeing uh, Fast X in Rome. Nice. Right. Damn. That's exciting. So you, you get to like like interview the cast and stuff. Yeah, they. Uh, it's kind of nice. I, I think this will be out before then. But the folks at Universal were very kind to mm -hmm. ask me to moderate the press mm, conference. So awesome. I will be talking to the entire family. Woo! Okay, nice. what's like? What's a hot take? Do you, uh, you're not really a hot take kind of question, which I no. appreciate about you. You're not trying to get people. You're not trying to go for a social media moment. But like, what is it, an actual thing on your mind about the franchise? I definitely want to talk to like the longer term people mm. about like the craziest moments for them, like sort of getting mm -hmm. to this. Cause oh, we're yeah. starting to get to the end of like, Hey, look, man, this is, 
this is coming to the end of it. And you're really looking at this as like a pantheon moment. Like, like break down some of your stuff. Like, like let's make mm. this a bit of a re- retrospective on this incredible franchise. Forget anything you've done. This is like a franchise that is going to be a high watermark for what movies can do. So like, yeah. this is How amazing. How many franchises have 10 installments ten that are install- still relevant and run by a the quarter 11th. century later? You know, you know, six billion deep. Like yeah. 10 Ooh, installments, hey, six billion deep. Y- you can have that. You can go, okay, it started a quarter mile at a time. Now it's a quarter century. You can have that. Oh, oh my God. That's for free. That. Put love that, that in Ron Pepper. Yeah. You're, 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 you're going to make Vin Diesel I'm going to I'm gonna do that, yeah. It's going to work. It's going to work well. All right, so, so usually, John, I'm yeah. going to do this two ways. We usually ask for like a streaming recommendation okay. a movie that you like. I'm going to get that from you, but before I get that, mm. what is the best Fast and Furious movie to you? <sighs> it's got to be Fast Five. You can't deny Fast okay. Five. It is, it's just the apex of everything they've done and the whole Brazil thing and the fact that that is going to echo into Fast 10 now speaks volumes about how good that movie yeah. was. Yeah. yeah. Rio just looks fun. Yep, it does. Uh, Michael Caine movie, Blame It on Rio, Jack, when there's some sex scenes in there for there you. There is some Blame It on Rio. I think a young there Demi is. Moore in yeah, that movie. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. God, it's a little man, problematic, that was, but yeah, sure. Was, there was, there was, that was back I, I've <laughs> never actually seen the movie. I was just I'm about just to say it was like, best friend's daughter, so. Yeah. Oh, what? Yeah. yeah. Oh, Slightly right. underage dish. Hey, you know what? We live and we learn. I never saw the movie. I remember seeing it. Obviously. It was on, I remember seeing it on Preview Guide uh, when I was a kid. You and thinking, <laughs> oh, this movie comes on like two hours. It was like three in the morning. I'm like, I'll stay up and see if I see any boobs. And I passed out. I fell asleep. Too many Pop Tarts. You want to recommend Lolita next? Because <laughs> that's kind of what you did. Join us next week for <laughs> you <laughs> host. <laughs> <tour. laughs> what is your favorite second. Fast movie? <laughs> My favorite Fast. Because I, like- I, I agree with John. I, I, I yeah, think Fast Five, five is, is the apex. When I was I was doing uh, on the street our our show here at Rotten Tomatoes that I'm doing now, uh, which yeah. is a lot of fun. Interviewing a, a bunch of folks at CinemaCon. Oh, nice. A, in Las Vegas, and just asking them what's your favorite Fast and Furious movie. A, some of them said Fast Five. A lot of them said the original. Oh, yeah. But a lot of them also said Fast Seven because the emotional goodbye good. to Paul Walker. So, yeah, yeah. So yeah. F- five and one, I was less emotionally uh, attached to Paul Walker, mm-hmm. and so I would put that as three. But uh, one, five, seven. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's good. All right. I and go now, five, uh, one, seven, so what yeah. is what is something that is uh, non Fast and Furious related that John Roca can recommend all the gang out there? Well, you know, I just finished uh, Beef, uh, and I absolutely so loved good. it. Speaking of I, raging on the road, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I was hesitating on that because of all the stuff that had come out, but I was like, you know what? I love Ali Wong. I love Stephen Yeun. Well, I want to support. I mean, know? that's the worst part about it. The show's amazing. Yeah, the which show that's is the worst incredible. part about the stupidity of the choice. Like, yeah. I'm like, like why points. do you want to talk about this when you could just talk about how great this show is? Yeah. And, and, and I've known Alex for a long time. She's yeah. a fantastic comedian. This is the uh, best acting she's done. I mean, you, so should, you should ask her about that. <laughs> I'm not going to ask her no, if she's no, seen no. Blame It on Rio. No, no, I'm going to no. say, hey, hey, what's your favorite Michael Caine movie? That's probably where I'll leave it. <laughs> no, actually, it'd be better for you to ask, like, what's she doing with my husband? <laughs> with Kidding. who? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I didn't know about that. Jacqueline has a lot of loves in her life. Oh, wow. No, no, just one. I, I okay. really think Bill Hader's great, but not like that. And honestly, that is probably the best romantic decision he's made post-divorce. Can so I, I'm happy for him. Can I add something to what Jackie yeah. just said? That's the other great thing that's going on right now. This is the best season of Barry and it's not even over yet. Yeah. It is. Oh, incredible. it's been nuts. Yes. Incredible. And he directed the whole incredible. thing. Yep. It's yeah. going to go out Anyone so complaining well. that it's not funny enough doesn't understand the masterpiece that he's building here in this season of Barry. Yeah. That's incredible. right. Well, I, I I don't know. Maybe the critics will come out and say my new stand-up hour is a masterpiece, <laughs> but you can check it out soon enough. Wow. Go to Mark Ellis Live on all the social medias for updates on when you can be the first to watch it. For Jacqueline Coley, I'm Mark Ellis and John Roca. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. Where can all much. the uh, folks out there find you? You can always find me at The Roca Says on Twitter and Instagram and TikTok, The Outlaw Nation on Twitch, uh, and my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash John Roca Says, where we have the Geek Buddies and the Hot Mic with me and Jeff Snyder currently setting studios on fire. You have just done the impossible because you took it, you, you had a great brand already and you've you've cultivated a YouTube following out of it, and Thank now you. you're big on Twitch and all the social media. And so it's been a I'm sure it's been a grind for you. It is. But it's kind of like what Jacqueline's gonna ask Vin Diesel about. You look back and you're like, I, I built this cool little empire. Yeah, when you love what you do, it's easy to build. There so, you go. And I think Vin does too with fast and Fair. furious. Yeah. All right. Uh, before we get out of here, who's winning the NBA final? <sighs> I hate to say this. The answer's the Nuggets. The Lakers. The answer's the Nuggets. No, it isn't. Email us at RT is wrong anytime. <laughs> RT is wrong at RottenTomatoes.com. Subscribe, rate, review, all that good stuff. For the whole gang here, I'm Mark Gallison. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Rotten Tomatoes is Wrong. <laughs>